This is the interactive figure, the dot product, projections. In this interactive figure, we will see what it means to project one vector onto another, and how the dot product relates to projecting vectors. The pane on the left shows a three-dimensional view, and there are two vectors. Both of these vectors have their tails at the origin. Vector u has its head at point A, and vector v has its head at point B. I can move around A and B to change those vectors as I like. As I change the vectors, we can also notice that the dot product is given at the top of the screen. So, for example, right now, as the vectors are located, I have u dot v equals 8.44. In the interactive figure, w is the projection of v onto u. So in the figure, the vector w is a thick purple vector that lies in the direction of u. And one way that people often think about projection is like a shadow. We imagine that the vector v casts a shadow onto vector u. So that shadow is cast perpendicularly right onto u. Another way that I like to think about projection is asking how much of v lies in the direction of u. What component of v is in the u direction? Let's take a look at some of these lengths. The length of this projection, that is the vector w, the length of this projection is 2.56 units. You should confirm that vector u has coordinates 3.5, negative 1.25, 1.75, and it has a length of 4.11 units. You can also confirm that vector v has coordinates 1.75, 1.75, 3.75, and it has a length of 4.49 units. Now, when you play with the interactive figure, uh, to confirm this, you can just move the three-dimensional view around and get a rough estimate for the coordinates of points a and b to confirm that. And then remember that the length of a vector is the square root of the sum of the squares of the coordinates. Well, how are these lengths related to each other? Well, it turns out that the length of the projection times the length of u is the dot product. Can you see how it is in this case? 2.56 times 4.11 turns out to be about 10.5. And no matter how I change my a and b, that relationship will continue to hold. So why is that so? Why is it that the length of the projection times the length of u ends up being the dot product? The next panel says, you should confirm the product of the length of the projection vector w and u is equal to the dot product, u dot v equals 11. So that's what we did. And why is that true? You can see this if you recognize the length of w equals the length of v times the cosine of angle AOB. I'll stop there for a second. Why is that true? So that's true because we have a right triangle here where w is the length of the adjacent side and v is the hypotenuse. And angle AOB is the angle between the two vectors. And so the cosine of that angle is the length of w divided by the length of v. Solving for the length of w gives us that equation. The length of w equals length of v times cosine of angle AOB. Also, you recognize that u dot v equals the length of u times the length of v times cosine of angle AOB. Now that is not immediately apparent. That fact was proven previously, and the proof of, the, of that equation relies on the law of cosines. So we will accept that as true, and we recognize that both of these equations are true. Now we can substitute. If I substitute the length of w for length of v cosine angle AOB in the dot product equation, that one right there, then we establish what we wanted, that u dot v equals the length of u times the length of w. Now this is where the interactive figure ends, but I do want to introduce one last equation. Just take this equation here and solve for the length of w, and we get the length of w equals 
u dot v divided by the length of u. And that's a nice useful formula because now I can figure out the length of that projection based on what I know about the given vectors u and v. All right, so there it is, the dot product and the relationship to projections.